Our next guest tonight on the show is Dr. Leon Hassan, who is president of Pinda Company and the country coordinator of India in Pump. Dr. Leon Hassan, welcome to the show. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. First of all, thank you very much, Manu, for having me on the show. It's a real pleasure. I was born in a little village in the south of the country and I very early on moved uh, to the area in Rotterdam where I spent most of my childhood. met my wife, we got married and we have three lovely children. Mm -hmm. Went to university in Leiden, studied physics, from there on moved to work for Philips for 25 years oh. on the semiconductor and software side. Then about 10 years ago started uh, my own business in uh, board advisory services, uh, consulting, um, helping companies to improve uh, their business. And about five years ago, I joined uh, on a voluntary basis an uh, organization called PAM, first as a senior expert and then later on as the uh, country, country director for India. Could you tell us about PAM? What do you do and what is your vision for this organization? PAM was founded some 40 years ago, actually, we have our 40th anniversary this year by the Dutch equivalent of uh, FICI, okay. uh, CII, so the Dutch Employers Association called VNO NCW. And the purpose of PAM is to make available senior experts that work from entrepreneur to entrepreneur to small and medium sized enterprises in selected developing economies such as uh, India. Now we do that by providing a very targeted, relatively short time-based interventions, working with the SME on the location uh, to try and improve certain aspects of the business, which the company feels itself need improvement or need attention. In India, there is very large, very respected multinational uh, companies that operate globally and frankly speaking these companies don't need a lot of help they can help themselves on the other part of the spectrum you have the micro enterprises so the one two three employee type companies that would be very difficult for an organization like PAM to reach out to and still have has some impact simply because of the sheer numbers. Yes. Uh, there is millions of these companies. Yes. Small and medium-sized enterprises today, also in India, they do have uh, very strong ambitions to grow, not just domestically, but also internationally. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the sort of bandwidth and the resources available to them uh, like many of the global corporations mm -hmm. have. There's only one thing that we cannot help you resolve. Mm -hmm. And that is if you do not want to help yourself, mm -hmm. then we cannot help you either. Exactly. And that is a very important point because sometimes companies have ambitions but no ability uh, to, to follow through. And then I think it's a waste of everybody's time to, uh, to so. get going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which cities of India have you worked in and which region has the most scope in development in terms of sustainability? In the course of the years I've been to many cities across all of India uh, from south to uh, Jammu and Kashmir in the north and uh, from Gujarat to Assam. So there's basically very few major cities where I have not been. Okay. In terms of regions and, and regions with the highest potential uh, for sustainable development I think every region in India has a significant potential for sustainable development. It's just per region there may be different areas uh, to look for. So if it, in agriculture or in pharma or in software uh, or in metals. I don't see many regions in India that would be excluded from having a wonderful opportunity uh, for sustainable development. How do you drive sustainable economic growth in developing countries like India? It is very important for the enterprise itself uh, to have a very clear understanding and view mm -hmm. on how they want to grow their business in a responsible and sustainable way. If that is lacking, uh, it is very difficult for somebody from the outside to come in and have a successful uh, intervention. But we can help, of course, uh, because our experts have quite a good 
network in the industry, not just in India, but certainly also in Europe, to create bridges and partnerships between companies from uh, India and the Netherlands, for instance. So it's because nobody can go the mile alone. Building these bridges between companies in India and the Netherlands is something which really creates a win-win situation for all parties involved, not just for the Indian company, but also for the Dutch companies involved. How long do these advisory missions take and what is the process when the Dutch experts reach India? Typically, uh, that takes two weeks. At the end of that two weeks, mm -hmm. two things will have been accomplished. Well, three things actually. First and foremost, we need to start building trust between the people in the company and our experts. If that is not there, then nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Then we have a shared understanding of what the key challenges are that we are going to address. And the third element is that we have an agreed plan of action mm -hmm. to do either fact-finding, and based on those facts, we'll take uh, appropriate action, or it could be that the expert need to do some market research uh, in his own network back in Europe. So there is uh, both sides work to do. Mm -hmm. From that time onwards, having the expert around in the company actually doesn't add any value. So the company now needs to, to get the time and the opportunity to reflect, to uh, get started on improving the issues that have been identified as uh, the key issues to be tackled. Then we enter into a period where by using remote tools like Skype, email, phone, whatever, mm -hmm. there is regular, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, conference calls between the experts and the key people in the company mm -hmm. to make sure that sufficient progress is being made, that if there are any roadblocks unexpectedly arriving, that they get removed in, in a proper way. And then if sufficient progress has been made towards the agreed targets, then a, a follow-up visit is planned either by the same expert, but it could be that there is other elements, maybe more marketing-related elements, uh, that then subsequently need to be tackled, so then it may be another expert or maybe even two or three experts. Typically what we like to do is uh, to put this in a program-based approach rather than individual projects. We say let's agree on a journey mm -hmm. which could be a number of years okay. and then identify the steps along the way that we are going to take. How do Dutch businesses experience collaborating with the Indian businesses? Yeah that's a very interesting question. Very difficult to answer in general but there is I think one common theme which is valid for almost all Indo-Dutch cooperations or partnerships between companies. The Dutch companies, uh, certainly SME companies, mm -hmm. are very focused on short and medium term results. Yes. So they're, they're, I would say, a little bit anxious and impatient. They want to get tangible results. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes gets in the way from, let's say, the more contemplative mode where people strategize a little bit and take some time uh, to make up their mind mm -hmm. as to uh, the broader context okay. of the actions being taken. I think that is an area where Indian companies actually are almost the reverse of what I painted for Dutch companies. So Indian companies tend to take a long time uh, to make up their mind as to what we're going to do. So bringing these uh, companies together is actually quite a challenge. Okay. But, on the other hand, if you manage to create a partnership between Indian company and a Dutch company, mm -hmm. they actually tend to be very successful and deep. So it takes a while because of the cultural differences that mm -hmm. Dutch people tend to be very direct, whereas Indian people, I don't have to explain that to you, eh, tend to be rather indirect. Mm -hmm. eh, so they deliver the message in a way which is not always easy for Dutch people to understand. Mm -hmm. So it's about the packaging. A simple metaphor is if I present you a gift, mm -hmm. 
then it's the packaging of the gift and the intent that I have in giving it to you mm -hmm. that is far more important than the actual content mm -hmm. of the gift. And you would never unpackage the gift. Yes. Yeah? Whereas in the Netherlands, it's the other way around. If you would give me something, mm -hmm. I wouldn't care about the packaging. I would just rip it open and look at the gift and say, so what is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So completely different. So, but then if you put the two together in the right way, you actually have quite a powerful recipe. Does having a Dutch business partner change the business model of the Indian companies when they expand to Netherlands? Yes, of course. Yeah. Certainly, if it's uh, uh, some kind of partnership, irrespective of the legal form mm -hmm. uh, of this partnership, there needs to be something in it mm -hmm. for all parties. So, in general, that means that uh, if you work in this type of partnership, you'll have to draft a business plan that is of common interest. So, yes, uh, the, the business plan uh, needs to be amended, and I would say, I would even go one step further and say, don't use your current business plan, but just do a business plan ground up specifically for the partnership that you are trying to form. That way, I, our experiences work much better. To what extent are the Dutch impact investors willing to invest in Indian companies? Well, impact investors obviously go across all borders, so also the, the border to India. Okay. They don't have any preconceived ideas about uh, Indian companies, and I know quite a few uh, very exciting uh, investments that impact investors have done in, uh, in Indian companies, in particular in grassroots type activities. The opportunities in India are almost limitless. So if I would be an impact investor, India would be top of my list. Yeah. Okay. What are some tips for Indian companies to create successful, sustainable businesses? I think for all Indian companies, no exception. If you're looking to expand your horizon to another market like Europe, or the Netherlands, it is almost impossible to do that all on your own strength. In particular, if you are a small, medium-sized enterprise, if you are Tata or Reliance, yeah, they have the means uh, and the resources available to open up any market they would choose globally. But if you're a small and medium-sized enterprise, usually strapped for resources, not a huge amount of experience in opening up uh, new business opportunities in other countries, then I would strongly suggest to find uh, good partners and come and talk to Pump and, uh, and we can help you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassan, for being on the show. Thank you very much, Manu, for having me on the show. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank each one of you who have given us lovely comments and feedback on our previous show. We'll meet again in the next episode of Manu Sharma Show. Till that time, good evening.